Uh, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, I'm that. very excited to have uh, Janet Scardino, CEO of Comic Relief, join us on stage. And uh, of course, uh, Jason Harris, CEO thank of you. Mechanism. Thank you. Before we get to our panel discussion, we're going to play a short video clip uh, featuring Richard Curtis. Most of you will recognize him as writer, director, producer, but he's also the co-founder of Red Nose Day, uh, and I think we have one such red <laughs> nose here. And so if we can cut to the video clip from Richard, please. Greetings to all of you there. I hope that you're doing amazing things. I think that the idea of tech for good is an absolutely crucial and timely idea. And I just want to say that I am one of the people who believe we're living in the best of times. We're actually living when fewer children are dying under, under the age of five, when there's greater equality for girls, when education is spreading around the world at an extraordinary pace, when diseases are being knocked on the head. And this is an opportunity for people who really want to change the world now to do it decisively with all methods of communication. Advertising, absolutely key. People want their ideas to be done sort of simply and encapsulated. They don't want to read huge long articles about things. Red Nose Day, which I started, and has now raised, I think, one and a half billion dollars, came from a simple person, I think his name was Peter Darling, round the table from an advertising agency saying, you need a symbol for your slightly boring charity. Why not go for a red nose? Business, unbelievably crucial. The world cannot change without business. You make up 70% of the jobs in the world. It is going to be absolutely crucial in the next 15 years that business becomes purpose-driven and follows the global goals and it is an amazing 13 trillion dollar opportunity power of tech i'm so worried for my kids that as it were tech is going to drive them towards you know pornography and basketball but i think that the opportunities to use online and digital to make people empathetic and be able to really make a quick direct change in people's lives is the amazing challenge for this moment. And if any of you can turn your minds to that so that you can make as much money as you like, but also try to help those people who don't have any money have some hope. Open the door and people come in, I've written here. The biggest satisfaction of my life has been the fact that if you say this is something that will change people's lives for the better, it is something that you get so much traction. And if you can think of clear, crisp ideas that you would be proud of in any other area, if you do them for philanthropy, the money that you make, the satisfaction that you get is more than any other time. Because this is the opportunity right now. We have got a unbelievably engaged, passionate, interested, results-driven group of young people in the world today who really believe that they're in contact with the world. So I would just say, tech for good for a better world it's a pretty good world already and i encourage all of you to think amazing thoughts and dedicate your best bits of brain um, to making the world the best it can be great and um, so janet jason you guys obviously work very closely together janet comic relief jason with mechanism you've got a storyteller here at the heart and the very beginnings of your brand but you're having to entrust that story every day then in a relationship of trust with mechanism. Talk a little bit about how you guys actually work together, Janet. Well, I'll start by, first of all, thanking you, Anya, and thanking all the organizers of Web Summit. We're really proud to be here. Um, I think everyone in this room is really dedicated to transforming business as usual, and we're trying to transform giving as usual and really find a new way to bring a new generation into our issues. And as you said, what is really different is having someone like Richard Curtis as our founder, but also as an active creator who really does help us tell powerful stories. And that's truly been a differentiator and why when we looked at mechanism, we said we need creative, an agency that truly understands that creative process and can imbue that in what we're doing, especially as we are a new organization in the States. Great. Yeah, Richard's the uh, spiritual leader of <laughs> uh, everything Red Nose Day, and, and everything really comes from, from him. Great. So we just help facilitate that, that vision in the U.S. And what about for you, Jason? You work with some of the biggest brands in the world, um, but a, an organization like Comic Relief comes along, renowned, their household name since 1985, they have fundraised hundreds of millions for charities world over, and you have to go to your board and say, it's an important 
important work, it's impactful, there's social good here. Yeah. It's not going to help our profit margins. How do you do that, that encouragement, that petitioning, that convincing? Uh, you know, in, in the case of Red Nose Day, it wasn't, it wasn't very challenging because it's such a well-known brand. Uh, but as an advertising agency, we started uh, about three years ago. We've been around about 15 years, always doing you know, big brands for profit. And we did a campaign with uh, Vice President Biden called It's On Us in the US, which was to combat sexual assault. And that was our first time where we did some, a pro bono job and it really changed the culture of our company. Uh, that first one was hard to convince everyone to do because we were gonna hemorrhage money and invest a lot in, in the campaign. But with the success of that campaign, when we got to Red Nose Day, which that campaign led us to Red Nose Day wanting to work with us, uh, it was really, really a layup because when you're doing good in advertising, uh, you retain employees, mm. the culture of the company increases, and you actually have shared beliefs. You're not just selling products and services. Uh, so it was, uh, Red Nose Day has been, been great for us. Great. And of course, one of the challenges uh, is translating a very famous UK brand to the US. You're having to try experiment with different things for a new audience, but I imagine try to hold on to some of the legacy core values that has made it this inspirational brand world over. So for you, what were some of the things that you wanted to ensure were enshrined in the brand bringing it to the US? I mean, so much of it was really focusing on making it fun to make a difference. And that is very unique in the, in the world of nonprofits. You know, most nonprofits really tell their stories by pointing a light at, at the despair and the situations that are really um, very emotional, but also quite desperate. And what we saw is that right now there is just so much of a desire to get involved, but equally there's a bit of fatigue in terms of, of the world of charity. So what we wanted to do is retain that power of fun and humor and coming together through the power of laughter. Um, as a gateway into the charity. And then from that, we're able to shine a light on the serious issues, which in our case is really about ending child poverty, something that a lot of people certainly are very committed to. But we know that the gateway and the gateway of giving is very much through the power of entertainment and laughter. And for you, Jason, knowing what had worked in the UK and thinking about how to make this impactful in the US, what were the things that you really had core to your thinking? And what were you thinking about in terms of a new call to action? Uh, yeah, so we really worked with Janet's team as an extension of their marketing team. And what, uh, in doing uh, the power of good, one thing you have to keep in mind is you always have to, there's kind of three things that we always follow. One is simplify the message. So the message can't, you know, there's not 30 years of history in the US like they have in, in the UK with Red Nose Day. So you have to have and Americans need, need stuff uh, quick and oftentimes simple. Uh, so simplify is a rule we always follow in the US, number one. Second rule is to inspire. You have to inspire the audience. Celebrities is a good way to do that. Creating content that people will notice. Doing specials on NBC, uh, for example. And then the third tenant that you always follow when you're doing social good campaigns is involvement. So there has to be a clear call to action for the audience. So simplify, simple message. In our case, we came up with Noses On. Uh, Inspire, we came up with content with a lot of different celebrities like Julia Roberts and Ben Stiller. And then the last tenant is Involve. Have a clear ask for the audience to do something simple. And they can do everything from uh, low, low involvement to high impact, like make a donation, to high involvement with high impact, like create a, at your company, create a fundraiser where you get the whole company involved. So you have to give the audience a simple message with a range of ways to get involved. That's the way to make an effective social good campaign. That's great. The, the simplicity of, me of message is one that has always struck me, but also the idea of fun. Yes. Like I grew up uh, with very much Red Nose Day was 
a, a date in the calendar because you knew Red Nose Day was going to bring back Mr. Bean or Absolutely Fabulous. So growing up, there was always these big set piece moments with celebrities and you did that really well. But I've been really struck by the fact that you've also had to innovate for the digital era. So you still have these big set pieces with, yeah. with Red Nose Day, but you've also managed to bring the community. It's very much a movement that is ground up. How do you think about those different activations with celebrities on the one hand, but bringing the community along on the other? It's such a good question, and it's really very much you're seeing it in research. We see that the public wants to see themselves in our campaign in a way that they didn't perhaps back when, when Red Nose Day started in the UK. But, the, but that power of the combination of really large partners, so Walgreens, where you, they, they're the exclusive retailer of the Red Nose, they've got 8,000 stores across the country, literally every corner. Um, NBC, where, as you said, has a big special. That really is like this culminating moment where the country can come together. And that r still raises a good deal of money for us. Partners like Mars and M&Ms and the Gates Foundation, which are really committed to um, bringing a new generation of, of giving uh, to all ages. So we have these incredible big Goliaths as partners, but importantly, it's that ground up. It's the idea that every single person, we want to get everybody in America, and indeed everyone in the world, to know that they can make a difference with a small action. It could be buying a nose for a dollar, it could be doing a penny drive at a school. We have underprivileged schools where they will get pennies together and, and donate those to Red Nose Day because they know there are some children around the world that indeed have it worse than they do. And so it's this idea that that ground up is very much combined with this scaled platform. Um, and we're really blessed. You know, in three years, we've gone from no exposure in the States to having almost 50% brand exposure in the US, which for all of you, knowing how hard it is to build a brand, and it's, the, it's very much that combination of a big scale platform combined with grassroots activities. And one, one uh, on the social uh, part, the other thing we added uh, to the, the, the elements Janet talked about is we did a, a live stream on Facebook uh, during the broadcast to also get donations uh, so that was something that we did that from a, since this is a tech conference mm -hmm. from that aspect. And then also uh, for the first time we got Red Nose Day on the homepage of Reddit, which was very powerful. And Richard Curtis, uh, spiritual gangster Richard Curtis, uh, <laughs> did a uh, Ask Me Anything. So we used um, tools to get also a, a younger audience involved with Red Nose Day to, to increase and broaden that awareness in the U.S. It's, it's actually a really good point and I'm sorry to, you know, partly, and a big reason why we're here, is that while we've had incredible success through the years, it started with the BBC in the UK, and it's been with NBC in the US, um, and that roller coaster of laughs and tears in TV has been very powerful. But the fact is, we, and while we get lots of digital engagement, we have so much support from Facebook and YouTube and, and um, Snapchat, we get free lenses and Twitter, we get incredible digital love. But that digital engagement hasn't really translated into digital donations. So a big thing that we're trying to focus on is how do we, through a lot of expertise in this room and others, how do we really take that engagement and make it easy for people and seamless for them to give? And, um, and that's a big, it's probably our, the thing that keeps us up at night mm. is making that transition. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very impressive that you've gotten to 50% brand recognition in the US. I was struck there when you mentioned Facebook. The, our, our, the way we used to watch TV, like an appointed time where we went before the TV set has changed because Absolutely. we now are in the Netflix uh, area. Millennials have different ways of engaging with content. So how have you approached that, Jason? Like you've obviously had to be very innovative in how you think about technology, social platforms, and just people's user behaviors when it comes to trying to get your mass message and, and advertisers across to an engaged audience. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to look at all the tools uh, when you're talking about social good campaigns. Uh, a lot of times social good campaigns will live and die through the social tools uh, and the way, the simplicity of message how you get uh, the audience to customize their profile or their badge, how they spread a message, short form content, all those things you have to factor in. Red Nose Day has such great partners because they're in uh, Wal Walgreens, they're on NBC, so they have this sort of built-in retail 
broadcast base, and then you fill it in with social. But other campaigns that don't have that, you really have to, it has to be a socially led initiative, mm -hmm. and you have to figure out how to leverage online influencers, folks with a following, almost look at those guys as a new celebrity to spread your message. Mm -hmm. And what and what Mechanism did so well was really working with all of our partners and our team in a really embedded way and helped everybody get on the same song sheet. So we really had, for the first time, a shared slogan in Noses On, so really making it easy to put your nose on, and that was a rallying cry for engagement. Um, and it helped, it's, you know, this little nose is so incredibly, can, you know, people just are gravitating to it, and when they put it on, you can't help but laugh. You can't help but want to take a selfie. You can't help but want to share it. And all of that in Noses On really was an incredibly powerful advertising slogan that helped everybody get aligned. But it really is, it allows, it allows the public, because we've sold almost 30 million noses in three years. And it helps everybody when they, get, when they put on this nose and they share it, they're immediately sharing to their entire social graph that they are behind the cause and they're part of it. So it's been, I think growing up and, and launching Red Nose Day during the, so, the age of social media has been such a, a, an actual, um, an incredible uh, blessing because this is incredibly inherently social by its design. And it's so simple, simple yeah. idea, red nose, it's very easy to do. Without the red nose, uh, you know, it wouldn't be where it is today. It's a simple right. icon. I've, I've read before you saying something like that what keeps you sane in the advertising industry is knowing that there is the scope and facility to use advertising and marketing to do good, to have yeah. social impact. What drives you day to day, and is there any call to action that you would have here uh, for the Web Summit conference? Yeah, sure. I mean, we, we created part of our company where, as an advertising agency. It's called Make Good, and the reason why it's called Make Good is we're doing, using our powers for good uh, to make up for using our powers <laughs> to sell deodorant and sneakers and everything else, <laughs> the, all the products and services that people need. Uh, this is a way where 10% of our resources go towards uh, using our powers in the same way we would build any other brand to build uh, social good and social responsibility. And you know, two things today that every advertiser has to think about is what their purpose is. They have to go beyond just selling things. The audience really wants them to stand for something and have a set of beliefs, and that's going to build a lot more brand equity. So that's a fundamental push with, with or without technology that brands need. And the second, which Red Nose Day does perfectly, is involve uh, the audience. And Red Nose Day is such a great platform because anyone in this room can get involved with Red Nose Day because it's, it's really Red Nose Day is the platform and it's handed over to the audience to take it and run with it and create content and create uh, fundraisers and really try to help end child poverty one nose at a time. Great. Janet, is there a call to action you'd like to leave Web Summit with today? A absolutely, and I'd, it would be a, a real honor if um, any number of, of folks in the room could be inspired to think about how you transform your, what you're doing in your world and trying to transform, again, business as usual, to help us figure out how we transform truly giving. And, and think about ways, whether it's through e-commerce, through virtual reality, through any of the products or apps that you're working on, or new endeavors that you think by, you could really test making it easy for people to give and making it easy for us to distribute our stories and our content in a way that really brings people in and is, is, enables us to be even a bigger gateway of giving um, through, again, incredibly inspiring and creative tools and technology. I'll say that last year, Facebook was you know, so, such an incredible um, and generous partner. They, they created a lot of new fundraising tools. And the difference in, in, in using those tools in 2016, we made $9,000 on Facebook, and in 2017, we made over a million dollars. So it really shows that there is the transformational power um, if we leverage and harness the best technology, the best tools, we make it easy for people to give. Great, thank you. Janet Scardino, CEO of Comic Relief, and Jason Hartz, President and CEO of Mechanism. Thank you so much. Please give them a warm Thanks round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.